Good morning. It is time for Coffee and Jesus here at Abundant Life Homestead as we continue in another day of the Connections Bible Study. The Connections Bible Study is based on the Revised Common Lectionary and is studied by millions of Christians around the world. Today's passage is from the Old Testament. Yes, today is Wednesday, September the 5th. And we are reading Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 14. Sixth. Is it the sixth? Yeah. Four or five. Yeah, it's the sixth. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I can't read calendars. It's okay. So we skip quite a bit um, in Exodus. Um, Moses and Aaron have returned to Egypt and have already um, performed the uh, miracles. And um, God has sent all the plagues except for the last. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep. uh, huh? We left off last week. God called Moses to back to Egypt. And we're going to skip right to Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> skip right to the end. The end of it, yeah. So. Good? Mm -hmm. I'm reading from the New International Version. Um, it's titled, The Passover of the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of, the, of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect. And you may take them from their sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, for it is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of peop both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. A lasting ordinance. For some reason I lost my highlight on this. I was wondering why you were. Okay, and I'll be reading in the Amplified today. And it is titled The Passover Lamb. I think you uh, read their title a little too fast because I'm pretty sure it said the Passover. You said the Passover of the Feast of the Unleavened, of Unleavened Bread. Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened yeah, Bread. The Passover and the fe Festival of and Unleavened festival. Bread. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months to you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Tell all the congregation of Israel on the tenth day of this month, they are to take a lamb or a young goat for themselves, according to the size of the house household of which he is the father, a lamb or young goat for each household. Now, if the household is too small for a lamb to be consumed, let him and his next door neighbor take one according to the number of people in the, in the households. According to what each man can eat, you are to divide the lamb. 
Your lamb or young goat shall be shall be perfect without blemish or bodily defect. A male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. Moreover, they, are, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel above the door of the houses in which they eat it. Then they shall eat the meat that same night, roasted in fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted in fire, both its head and its legs, along with its inner parts. You shall let none of the meat remain until the morning, and anything that remains left over until morning you shall burn completely in the fire. Now you are to eat it in this manner. Be prepared for a journey with your loins girded, that is, with the outer garment tucked into the band, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it quickly. It is the Lord's Passover. For the, I, the Lord, will pass through the land of Egypt on this night, and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and animal, against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments, ex exhibiting their worthlessness. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign on you and the doorposts of the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you, and no affliction shall happen to you. To destroy you, shall ha no affliction shall happen to you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall keep it as a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. You are to celebrate it as an ordinance forever. I'm having a tough time reading this morning, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, this is good. This is one of those where there's a whole lot of ways it can go, and we're probably only going to take it two or three. And but it's it's good to hear where other people would take it too. So. Um. I have the uh, God gives His people protection. Before sending the final plague on Egypt, God gave instructions to his people so that those who were obedient would be saved. So yeah, I, I was, when, when you said he gives protection to his people, it, it, what popped in my head was he, he gives the choice of that protection to his mm -hmm. people. Um. The Passover happened in homes, not temples, altars, or led by priests. All those things, although those things are important, this is another example of God's desire to have a personal relationship with us. A big thing about the plague of e plagues of Egypt is he was, they were specifically against the Egyptian gods, mm -hmm. and you know, as we as we saw in the past, both in Abraham's story and with Isaac's story, he set him apart. He set himself apart from the mm -hmm. gods of that day. And one of the biggest things was, I'm a God who's going to get personal with you. So with the Passover, he could have said, everybody in the temple, and then you'll be saved. No, this is your family at your home. I am your God. We're getting personal. This is happening at home. We don't need the temple. We don't need the altar. We don't need the priest today. And did they actually have temples in Egypt? I assume they did. They some kind of place of worship. I mean, I'm sure they gathered somewhere. I kind of assume that it would have mm. had to have been underground. Or it might have been intense. Mm -hmm. I'd have be. to study that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I did asked a lot of questions on, on online and a lot of things I had questions to about. There's, it, it doesn't say it one way or another. Uh, the other thing that I have is that Jesus fulfilled all of the rules pertaining to sacrifice mm -hmm. and rewards the obedient with everlasting life. Because now we don't have to find the perfect sheep. It's a year old without blemish. Because Jesus was the Passover. Right. Jesus was the perfect lamb. Mm -hmm. When when it comes to lamb, um, an interesting thing I did find, um, I don't know, did yours mention a lamb or goat, like, 
multiple times over and over. Um, it said lamb multiple times, and then it said lamb or goat. Yeah, the, but the, at the very the, beginning, there's a note on the first one. The word that said they lamb used, or kid. The word the word the ancient Hebrews used was was both the same for lamb and goat. They didn't really differentiate. So pretty much all the translators. Yes, because later in the new in the New Testament, you know, even John the Baptist, when he first sees Jesus as adults, he said, there, "Behold, the Lamb of God," you know, and, and several times Jesus is referred to as the Passover. So a lot of them w went back and said, "Okay, this is to be a lamb," but at the same time, the word was synonymous with both lamb and goat. Mm -hmm. So, like the Amplified here, I think only once it only said lamb, and every other time it said lamb and goat. Yeah, mine lamb says, or goat. The Hebrew word can mean lamb or kid. There you go. Also in verse 4. So, mm. um, I dropped my book, but uh, <laughs> that was actually but, all I had written down. Um, I, I, I kind of, I, I left the whole connection with Jesus off of mine because I knew, I knew you'd go there immediately. <laughs> Um, we must have faith to believe in God's faithfulness to his promises and remain obedient to his commandments. Um, that's something we mentioned right there in the beginning where it obedience. came to my mind was they, they, he gave them the choice of protection. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and absolutely if, if any Israelite did not follow this to a T, They'd have lost their firstborn that night. And the Bible doesn't... Well, it doesn't even follow it to... Not even following it to a T. No, it says at, very at the least, very, very beginning. If they didn't do this... Oh, wait, sorry. That was in the next one. <laughs> you're, you're, you read on to the Passover feast, honey. Yeah. The Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Yeah, if they that, ate that, the bread, it was no, they, they, cut off from Israel. Yeah, you know, God, God told them, you know, do it this way. Take this goat. Do it mm -hmm. then. Um, but it, when he actually passed over, he'd only be looking for the blood. But I, I, so I'm sure there would be something not good for anyone who, who had tried to cheat the system with, mm -hmm. with a, a lamb that was crippled or, or tried to save some of the meat and stuff. But his, yeah, his, his only absolute here is I, when I pass over, I, I will see the blood. I will spare that home. So, yeah, any Israelite who who believed in God, and, but didn't have that strong enough faith to say, okay, God says this, we got to do it. The next morning was, was going to be having a real bad day because they probably lost their child. And, and what I had wondered, just, just as with... Um, I believe like Abraham's servant that had prayed, it was praying and blessing God and everything. If any Egyptians took part in the in the Passover in the same manner that the Israelites were told to, would they have been? Because he says, "Tell it to your to the congregation of Israel," but his only real stipulation is, "I'm going to come through the land of Egypt." And I see the blood, I'll spare that house. No affliction will happen. Well, and the thing is, he's bringing judgment on mm. the gods of Egypt. Yes. So it would be the ones that believed. Yeah, and yeah, he, he, he. The gods of Egypt. So I and, think and that, that, that's one of those things I was wondering, and I couldn't find it. There's, it says there's no reference in the Bible to whether or not it happened. Well, and at this point, but you he know, does make there it is the importance of there is a mixture of blood because I mean we see that with Joseph he married an Egyptian, mm -hmm. so it's if they were part, if they were part of the church, they would have been part of Israel. But he 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 does make it clear that you know, you better have the faith to believe that mm -hmm. I'm faithful to what I say I'm going to do. Or you're gonna you're you're gonna lose your child right there with, yeah, right there with the, the the Egyptians. And I think any of the Egyptians that had believed and did it, um, they would have left with them as well. Probably. 
so they technically wouldn't be Egyptians anymore. Did we we, we kind of had this similar conversation with uh, it was Abraham's servant. Like, are we going to see Abraham's servant in heaven, even though he wouldn't really be allowed to be a Jew? He might. I, and I, I'd say we probably will. I'd say just we're going to see a just, lot of people just, that people wouldn't expect. Just as God made it clear that he was here for the Gentile as well as the Jew, mm -hmm. it, that can go back a few thousand years, you mm -hmm. know. Because there were faithful Gentiles. But that, that's a question I, 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 I want to know the answer to when we get there. Did any Egyptians take part in the first Passover? I think it'll take you a long time to get to that question. Probably. <laughs> but we will have a long time to ask that question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah you, you read on. Yeah, I did. I, I'm, you you um, got into the, the... Although, speaking of unleavened bread, that is a, a bit of an interesting part here. With not, not only the way they were to be dressed, but with the meal itself mm -hmm. eaten in haste. Yes. The unleavened bread is a very quick bread to make. Mm -hmm. Bitter herbs, very quick to grab. Don't waste time preparing. You cook the meat right on the fire to be touched by the fire. You know, you're, mm -hmm. this is all, this is happening now. And also the interesting... Um, I think he was preparing them for when they were to leave. Yeah. Because that was something that had to be fast. And that was pretty... Um, didn't they... Didn't Pharaoh tell them to leave, like, the morning they found all the children of Egypt dead? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of talking well, about Well, there was it, seven it, it, days that they were to eat the bread without yeast. No, that was in the future. You're, you're, you're back on, on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I mean, you keep going, you know, there's yeah, there, there's a lot of talking probably. about it and everything. But the but the night that the Passover actually happens, wasn't it the next morning, Pharaoh said, get out of Egypt, leave my country, or, or somewhere along there. I thought, I thought it was right after the Passover. And then changed his mind and chased them down, and that's when... when... During the night. Yeah. It wasn't even morning. Yeah. Yeah. So Mo yeah, they're, they're, during they're, the night, yeah. Pharaoh Moses, or that's in thirty one. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, "Up, oh, leave my people, you yes. and the Israelites, go so, worship the Lord as and, He and, requested. Take your flock and herds." In God's said, instructions, He was He was setting them up as if they were leaving. So there's another. I mean, if you weren't dressed, if you didn't eat that meal in haste the way God mm -hmm. said, and you weren't dressed. You'd have probably not been out before Pharaoh changed his mind, and you'd probably been slaughtered on his way to chase down Moses and the Israelites that did make it out. You know, the, the, that's where I, I, I see it as a big lesson of faith. We have faith to believe. We we have to have the faith to believe in God's faithfulness because mm -hmm. He said what He says, not it, not just what He says He's going to do, but what He tells us to do. There's a pretty good reason for it. Mm -hmm. He's sitting there explaining, get ready, because you're, you're going to be getting out of here. Without saying, get ready, you're going to be getting out of here, like today. Mm -hmm. And and the other, the one other part that I found interesting, and, and when, when you tie in the Passover lamb with Jesus, um, is that they had to eat everything. Mm -hmm. You... you I, I there there's also the oddness of don't don't eat any of it raw. I don't know how common it was to eat, eat raw meat back then, but eat the head, the legs, and the inner parts, and, and that's kind of the thing where when Did we you say eat them or cook them, eat them. Because I thought it said cook them. Okay. Um, I'm pretty yeah. It, it depends on which translation you read, but I I got to eat them out of it but but that's that's along the lines that you know you you can't just yeah, but roast it over the fire with the head legs and internal organs you, you you can't just pick the parts of jesus that you want you have to take the whole mm -hmm. and you know and and give your household the whole you know all, all of jesus is here you know we 
not a little bit of him, not the best parts. It's every oh, every man. bit, everything about Jesus we have to take, or we no, get none. We don't have. Well, we don't to. have to. We, that's why, or we get none. You know. And um, what's interesting though yeah. uh, is that when you put this, I'm probably gonna go too deep here, but um, when you put the lamb. Um, in in whole on the sacrifice, Jesus was whole. Mm -hmm. um, it was common at that time to break the legs of the people that were being crucified so that they would um, die faster. And um, before they got to that point, and that was at the point where they put the spear in his side, um, that is when they would have broken his legs. So that was another thing that instead of him being broken, um, which he was broken, but it was different. Um, he was still whole. And that was part of what they were doing when they went to look for him later. That's how they knew, um, th how they could differentiate between the people who were crucified on the cross. They knew it wasn't him because their legs were broken. Okay. I know. I told you I was going to do that. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I just think of the lamb, the whole lamb, mm -hmm. and not parts removed first. Like Jesus was the whole lamb. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you had a, a finishing with that or no okay. that's how I always do it <laughs> just random thoughts right. that I, I was kind of struggling with words tonight too may or may not go together okay so oh. let's pray all right father we thank you for the gifts that you give us the um protection that uh, is offered for our obedience we just need to be obedient to receive it and it's not just like it was in this time it's still there today we just need to be obedient and receive the gifts that you have for us we got a few requests lord um They're very deep and entailed and um, on a very personal level, but you know those needs and we're not going to delve into them publicly for everyone, but you know, you know what they are and you know just what they need. And we ask that you be with everyone watching and guide us as we go through our day and help us to be your light in this world. In Jesus name we pray. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Tomorrow, tomorrow, September the seventh, because today's the sixth. Although I said it was the fifth, mm -hmm. we are reading Psalm one forty nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments below. And if you want some, have something that you don't want shared publicly, you can send it to our email address at ministry.alh at gmail.com. I was questioning myself whether I'd said dot or at. <laughs> oh, you've done both. That's okay. That's why it's in words too. Anything else? Nope. All right. So, we thank you for watching and sticking it out with us for another day, even when we uh, kind of struggled today. But uh, we hope you all have a wonderful day. We love you all. Hope you're blessed. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye.